Good evening and welcome to the Wales Report where we look at the issues affecting lives throughout Wales and question some of the decision makers. And this week we start with one of the most fundamental principles in our society. The right of every individual to access justice. The UK has one of the most expensive legal aid regimes in the world. It costs up to £2 billion a year. Ministers believe that's not defensible when pressure on government budgets is so intense. Drastic changes have already been introduced. Legal aid is being removed from entire cases of civil law, including some family cases. But ministers are convinced it's the right approach, despite protests from senior lawyers who warn that the changes could cause hardship and long-term damage. Helen Callaghan has been investigating. Now the defence are going to quote you statistics about They will try to cast doubt as to whether the paramedics could have... Justice is supposed to be accessible to all, rich or poor. And in the past, each year, some 25,000 people across Wales have used legal aid to help them pay for advice and lawyers. But huge cuts to the legal aid budget, which came into effect earlier this month, will change all that. Legal aid no longer applies to entire areas of civil law, including some family and medical negligence cases. And lawyers here in Wales are warning that that could have serious consequences, not just for the legal profession, but crucially for people who need financial help in accessing justice. People like the Weaver family from Bridge End. Emily Weaver's now 26. She was born with cerebral palsy. And when she was two, doctors failed to spot that a tube draining fluid from her brain had blocked. The difference between Emily before and Emily after that happened was heartbreaking. After the incident, it was literally like bringing home someone who was blind, deaf and like a plank of wood because she was so stiff. Legal Aid funded the Weaver's successful medical negligence claim, which ultimately gave Emily care and equipment for the rest of her life. Emily now is able to have uh, everything that she needs, things to stimulate her, things to encourage her to, to, to do things. She needs um, sensory equipment and sensory programs and so on. And we weren't able to give her any of that before. What would you have done without legal aid? I don't think we could have done anything. I don't think anybody could understand how traumatic um, being a parent, but certainly being a carer anyway, of somebody like Emily is. It's every day you're living a nightmare. So legal aid coming along at that time was our saviour and Emily's saviour. Now the changes to legal aid and the civil law are in place, next the UK government want to reform legal aid and the criminal law. But barristers across Wales have said enough is enough. This week the Wales and Chester Circuit of Barristers voted unanimously to strike over the UK government's proposals. The justice system in Wales at the moment is very much in danger. The effect of these cuts, if they come in, to Wales in particular, will be absolutely devastating. Freedom of choice will go, the provision of legal services in Wales will be very much reduced, people will be denied access to justice. We take this very seriously. This isn't a hollow threat. This is a threat, I'm afraid, that the government will see coming into force sooner rather than later. So, in future, will more and more people, without legal aid or money for a lawyer, end up being forced to come to court themselves to argue their case. The Bar Council certainly thinks so. They've even issued a new guide to representing yourself in court. It's full of handy hints and tips about what to bring to court, including key documents and highlighter pens. It even tells you to dress for success. And it does have quite a lot of information about the law in it, but what it can't give anyone is a legal qualification or years of experience. For parents like John Weaver, the idea of DIY justice is a non-starter. Could you possibly have represented yourself, do you think? It's hard work for any solicitor to represent us and Emily in a complex case like Emily's was. No way I could have done that. 
fighting for Emily on a day-to-day -day basis is one thing, standing in court or whatever and, um, and trying to do that is another. So without legal aid, without the solicitors that we used, we couldn't have had the result that we've got. In a statement, the UK government's Justice Minister, Lord McNally, defended the reforms, saying, at two billion pounds a year, we had one of the most expensive legal aid systems in the world. We had to make some difficult decisions, but we have safeguarded legal aid to ensure lawyers are there for those who really need them. The next few months will undoubtedly be a turbulent time for the legal system. There may well be short-term savings, but for a growing number of professional legal bodies and families like the Weavers, the long-term effects will be nothing short of devastating. What do you think of the changes? In a word, unethical. At the very least, I'm very disappointed. At the most, I'm very angry. To attack the most vulnerable people in society and people who already have a great disadvantage and then take away the little hope they've got. I don't care what government it is, it's unforgivable. Well, that report was by Helen Callaghan and the controversy surrounding the changes very much in evidence at yesterday's Welsh Conservative Party conference in Swansea because Andrew Taylor, former Conservative candidate, we saw him in the report, uh, insisted on asking the Justice Secretary, Chris Grayling, a question after his speech. Grayling to tell the Welsh people no how many job losses are likely to There's come no about question. as the result of his law reforms that will devastate no. Wales and where the reform mm. doesn't even mention the Welsh language. Could Mr Grayling tend to that question? Okay, let me give you a straightforward answer. We are having to take tough and difficult decisions. And I'm no different to the Ministry of Justice of having to take tough and difficult decisions. So we're making changes to legal aid. We're making changes to our, uh, the way we run our prisons. We're making changes in our courts to bring down costs. There is no option. The alternative is the Labour way, which is to carry on spending the money set the same way, pass on huge debts to our children, and leave our country in the kind of crisis that we're seeing in other parts of Europe. And I'm not prepared to do that. Well, you don't need to be a lip reader to see that Mr Taylor wasn't entirely convinced by that response. Joining me now is Simon Mumford, a consultant solicitor advocate and a former member of the Law Society Council. Good to have you with us, Simon. Thanks Nice to much. see you again, Hugh. Um, the legal aid system is eye-wateringly expensive. It needs radical reform and that's what you're getting. Uh, I don't agree with that and nor do many other experts. If you go back to 1991, which was the last time a government tried to introduce price competitive tendering, which is what's going to affect solicitors and indeed barristers. There were 1,400 firms of solicitors. We are now down to far fewer than that, and we are now going to be asked to reduce it in total to 400 firms of solicitors for the whole of England and Wales. Are you more concerned? about the impact on your profession than on people's ability to access justice? I think they go hand in hand. Access to justice is going to be virtually impossible. Let's take two areas that are going to be very badly affected. Industrial South Wales, as it was really, uh, is going to be one procurement area. Now there are one and a quarter million people living in that area. I suspect the number of firms servicing that area at the moment is somewhat over 40. It's going to come down to eight to cover all of those people and that whole area. And that system is going to be applied equally to rural areas. I now practice in Pembrokeshire, uh, where I come from, and there are, for David Powys, some 515,000 people living in an area that covers 4,500 square miles. At present, probably something in the region of 22, 23 firms that do a measure of criminal legal aid work. That's going to come down to four. And the worst of this is that the client won't have a choice. You won't go to the solicitor you've had before. What will happen is you will go onto an automated system which is re replacing the uh, duty solicitor call centre or defence solicitor call centre and they will allocate you a provider. But what they're going to do now is literally 
sweep the legs from under the system because you're going to find a lot of firms going to the wall, giving up, and there won't be access to justice. Well, you say that, but ministers would come back and say again, as they have done in interviews I've done in the past, and they'll say, those who need it will have access to it. This reform is all about stripping it away from those who don't really need it. Well, I don't agree with that. Let's have a look at the uh, barristers who very sensibly issued a guide to people to do their own cases, because that's going to happen. There will not be solicitors available. What is going to happen is a lot of people will have to represent themselves. Now, I applaud the Bar Council for issuing the guide they have, but I have to point out, quite a number of my clients are not able to read. A number of them would be absolutely flummoxed if they were put before a court and told to present their own case. How can the government have an adversarial system when you are in a situation where one of the adversarials doesn't have the, the appropriate weapon. It's like putting a, a person into a gunfight with a banana against a man with a machine gun. When will we see the practical results of what you warn could happen if these changes go through? I'm told that uh, these proposals will be implemented in October. We are going to have to put bids in, and as I say, a lot of the firms are just going to say, we can't do it. It's a complete and utter nonsense, and I agree with Andrew. Rubbish. Simon Mumford, thanks very much for coming in.